Um, Coach, starting third week, I guess, this week. So just how do you feel like it's gone this far from a defensive perspective? Yeah, it feels, I guess it's day, what, practice nine? Yeah. Feels like practice two sometimes. Uh, flies by, you know, I think sometimes when you're enjoying it and you're having a good time and kids are flying around, um, that, that's awesome. But I think the big thing we focused on is protecting our culture and, and that's effort-based defense, playing fast, running the ball, um, our tackling. I think those are the two things we took out of Saturday and said, hey, here's the things we got to work on. And it's just pursuit, which could, you know, if you're pursuing the ball, you're not going to give up big plays and then attack them. We had some overruns, so that was what we were really focused on in practice today with the tackling circuit and the pursuit drill. Um, it was a good day for that. So, and we got some kids that, you know, have flashed and, and some new guys that have flashed. So that's been a, a pleasant surprise and really proud of those guys, proud of our older guys for embracing what we do, how we do things, and just moving forward with it. And then we've had some, some young freshmen, high school kids that just got here uh, that, you know, show that, you know, there's why we recruited them, why we signed them, and that they belong here. So it, it's been an interesting spring. Um, you know, a new offense will make you – get lined up fast and put some stress on you defensively. So we've been dealing with that as well as going through what we what we do. So it's been good. How do you keep the effort and the discipline the same <laughs> as what you're accustomed to with JDB trying to keep it, keep you up yeah. to the keep you moving yeah. fast? Yeah, so you're, you're worried about, you know, discipline, playing fast, playing physical, creating turnovers. Uh, and at the same time, you got to catch your breath and get lined up, and you got to think that much faster. So I think I said this the other day. Um, I thought some of our bigger plays we gave up last fall – or because we didn't get lined up and we didn't handle tempo. So I think that's stressing us right now to put us in situations where we got to handle tempo. And if we can think fast, we can get lined up fast, and we can play at that tempo, when people slow it down on us, we'll be prepared for that because that, that won't be a big deal. The disguise them will be a bigger deal then. But right now it's like, how fast can I get lined up? What's the call? You know, what's my assignment? What's my job? What's my adjustment? And how can I execute it? Uh, and we had a, you know, a couple situations, a goal line situation today where – we got in the fourth down, and, and we don't necessarily execute our assignment because hey, it's going fast again. It's, it's a live drill. It's a little warm out there, and you know a lot of excuses. But you you know you can't you can't let those hit you. You got to put that behind you, and got to move forward, and make sure we rise to the occasion, and make sure we're capitalizing those situations because those are as game reels we can make them, and, and it's been really good for that. How was the, the competition at Rush? You know, trying to play replace yeah. Jeremy and, and Jack and yeah. that thing going forward. You know, Jer Jeremy Lewis and Jack Powers were. Uh, you kind of set the cornerstone there for forever, it seemed like. And, you know, every time I turn on turn on the film, and me and Coach Zachary going through it and kind of showing him, it's like Jeremy Lewis's teach tape, Jack Powers' teach tape. And uh, I'm going to miss those guys, but I'm really excited about Sam Danka and Raheem Craig, um, you know, different in, in their own ways. You know, Raheem is uh, – right now he's more – always played the D-line, always had his hand on the ground. Um, but I think he has some really good twitch. He gets off the ball. Um, and some power to him, speed to him. He got really good bend. And then Sam Danka's length out there, and he's more of an in-space guy, off-the-ball guy. Uh, was a high school safety, you know, invert, obviously. Uh, so two different guys that were trying to, you know, convert into an outside backer position. But they, they've grasped it really well. And we obviously got some more work to do to get them to the, the final product and where we need to be. But just really excited about those two guys and, you know, even some guys down the line. Um, Jackson Barker's another guy that's uh, uh, doing a really good job out there. And Shy Thompson is a freshman out there that showed that, you know, he belongs here at this level. And, and then we got some other options out there as well. Raheem, y'all recruited him hard out of high school. Mm -hmm. and like, I know he played down yeah. D in Louisville. But yeah. It seems like y'all's scheme could be a better fit for him. Do y'all kind of agree with that when you're recruiting him? I, I do. I, I, you know, I think he's a natural out there. He keeps asking if he can get in a four-point stance. And, <laughs> Uh, we're like, no, he looked pretty good standing up. And I think that was just a comfort level for him. Uh, and he hadn't asked that in the last two weeks. That was that was week one. Uh, but to watch him come off the edge and, and do some things. And uh, I guess it was Nate Harvey a couple of years ago you had, you know, and I didn't watch Nate close, but I bet he reminds you of him, you know, that type of guy. Hopefully he's that productive. Outside of just the production, how do you replace the leadership of guys like Lewis and Powers? I, I tell you what. You know, we got guys that are working their tails off and, and they're becoming our hardest workers on our football team. I mean, obviously we have Deontay Johnson, Elijah Moore, Sue Radware, Chad Stevens. Um, you know, the list goes on inside there. Uh, but we've got guys that, hey, they start a few games here, a few games there, uh, in the back end at backer. Um, but when those guys, and, and you know, you always hate to say a guy until he played, go ahead and play, but Zakai Barker's been one of our hardest workers. 
And he's earned the respect of everybody in this building. And when you do that, and then you go out on the field and you produce, you're naturally going to be that guy. And as long as we continue to do that, I think he's going to be one of those guys that can, you know, be a voice on the field for us and a voice in the huddle for us. You talked about Zakai when he was hurt, like he was still studying film and yeah. the defense. So yeah. how good is it to see him back healthy and, and yeah. kind of playing his yeah. two, two years ago, he came in early as a high school freshman, uh, tore, tore his ACL. I think he was home on spring break, getting some extra work in in the sand pit and, and tore it. And uh, so his whole first year was just a frustrating year for him. But he was still locked in as much as I've seen ever, ever seen a kid and knew, knew the scheme, knew the playbook. And uh, I think even last year, he kind of was coming back from it, wasn't fully healthy, uh, kind of got banged up with an ankle last fall and you know, you know got rolled up on his foot last fall. And um, now he's changed his body a little bit and then off season and just so, so happy and proud of him. You know, obviously he got to go do it on Saturdays in the fall. You know, it's one thing to do it on Saturdays in the spring. What counts is those Saturdays in the fall. So he's got to keep working, got a lot of work to do, but proud of where he's been so far. With you know safety, y'all, y'all have had a lot of guys that have played. Yeah. I guess like part time. Yeah. What's kind of the? What do they have to do to make that jump into like full time? Yeah, I mean you got Jordan Huff started some games. Dante Desnash started some games. Omar Rogers, Devin King, they've all started back there um, as part time guys. You know they haven't been the guy yet, and, and I think days like today challenge them a little bit. I mean there was a lot of running. We did our half half field man work, stacks and bunches. We did a perimeter drill, which is throw the screens out there, and you know they're getting blocked on the edges, and they got to go make the play. We did a skelly, we did a live team run, might as well have been an inside run. We did a goal line period, and we did a tip over team period at the end. And, and that first safety, that's a lot of stress on your body, and a lot of thinking, getting lined up, a lot of different defenses in right now. We basically have a whole playbook in right now, in, in nine practice. So for those guys, that's you know it pushes them, and it pushes them to, to put, get to that position. You know, I think that you got to stress them to be the guy. And if we can do that, then I think we'll be fine in the fall. But, you know, they all four have shown flashes that they can they can make plays and does some really good things. They just got to be consistent with it. And then corner, you know, Siobhan, Siobhan, whatever his name is, yeah. uh, he tells us. Um, <laughs> he's obviously out this spring. Is that like a good opportunity for those other corners to kind of establish a themselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think for him too, for Siobhan, it's – it's one of those things sometimes when you're out and you're out of the action, out of the heat, you kind of step back and look at the bigger picture and like, okay, I see what coach is talking about now. Or I see what my responsibility, what my job is. You see a little bit of the bigger picture than just, hey, I'm lined up on number one all the time. Um, but those those guys, it's absolutely you know, a chance for um, I, Isaiah Brown Murray is a guy, again, knock on wood, that's had a really good spring up to this point. He's got to keep pushing. But compared to where he was in the fall, he's taking that next step. And he's continued to do that. So it's, it's been a good opportunity for him to do that. I told him, say, hey, that corner room, how they go attack practice every day is a reflection of how you're leading that corner room. Um, and that's where it starts. Talked about leadership. I mean, leadership starts in your position room. If I can, you know, if I'm Isaiah and I can go lead my corner room, well, then I become a voice, a bigger voice and a bigger voice. So that's where it starts. And then, uh, you know, Tom Air Brown, uh, Andrew Wilson Lamp, uh, you know, Lamp, Lamp Wilson, they, they have an opportunity to get more reps now. Um, and, and not just reps against the twos and threes, but reps against the ones. Dalen Distance, same thing. So we're trying to find out hey, who – and I told the guys today, we're trying to find out who we can trust in the fall and, and who we can count on. And not just who the coaching staff can trust, but who your teammates can trust. Because they want to know that they can look at you. Hey, you're going to lock somebody down on the edge, a corner, you're going to do your job, and you can get off the field with me. We can ride with you. So that's, that's what we're looking at right now, and guys that go compete. And, you know, hey, who's going to be our top 20, 25 guys? I mean, it may be a situation. I was just talking to Coach Houston in the hallway about our offense going to go faster. Well, we might play more defense, defensive snaps. Probably not, probably, but will, you know. And how much deeper are we going to have to go, you know, to make sure we have enough depth to do that? We've played, you know, about 20 guys last year, maybe 22 the year before. Maybe we have to go to 25 guys to make sure we're ready to play. So we've got to make sure we're, we're taking advantage of every rep we get this spring to make sure we find those guys and develop those guys.